Isn't that kind of a cool way to start a video? With the kittens meow. Well, not a kitten anymore, I am. Though she looks like one. Hi, I am Aaron, and uh, today I'm here to do another video. I hope you checked my last video. It was kind of long and daunting. It was kind of movie-length. Uh, <laughs> my cat is like, every time I move my hand, she's like moving her head up and down. I'm so afraid she's going to be, this is going to turn into an episode of When Kittens Attack. Uh, <laughs> but, uh... I did a complete Criterion collection. It ran an hour and 43 minutes. So, in a way, it's kind of an unofficial podcast. Uh, what about this one here? May kind of be the same thing. I'm hoping it doesn't go into uh, to that length of territory, but we'll see. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking to you about my complete Scream Factory collection. And we're going to talk about that and delve into that entire collection. we got DVDs, we got Blu-rays, we got box sets. We got a lot, so uh, right after this. Hey there, so for everybody that's been watching these uh, videos over the last couple of days, I want to thank you so much. Uh, I'm, what I'm trying to do right now is just kind of revitalize my channel and come back uh, fresh and renewed. And with that, uh, for people that are longtime viewers, hopefully they'll enjoy the collection videos. And pe for people that have just kind of jumped on here, uh, it's kind of a great way to start in to see the kind of stuff that I like. I've uh, tried to put some like different things in there. Obviously the opening I started to wall back. And... Uh, Recently, I've also like put little things other like you know personal pictures close you know at the end credits and uh, sometimes after credit sequences, and I've also been like uh, putting little hints and Easter eggs for uh, upcoming videos within uh, within videos. So if you watch my last screen like uh, Arrow video collection part three, you're gonna notice that in the background what I used was a uh, was the Criterion a shot which showed what my next video is going to be able to hint towards that. That doesn't mean that my next video there is going to be a shameless one. That's uh, that's just what I got it on there for right now. But uh, just keep your eyes out for stuff like that. Anyway, let's get right into it. I have like some DVDs, some Blu-rays, and uh, some box sets. I'm actually a big Screen Factory fan. Now, over this last Screen Factory sale that came out, the Summer Fear, I was actually very disappointed with Screen Factory. It was their very first time of really uh, seriously botching the Summer Fear. The Summer Fear has been their big sale, their, their kind of go-to sale to get people to really come in to uh, to, to like buy like Screen Factory and people that hadn't been on the on the bandwagon before kind of got on during these uh, during, during these sales and then kind of tend to buy like everything afterwards. Uh, they really messed up this time. They used to have like a, a bunch of movies and they'd have like six or seven movies every uh, every week. And, and that would switch up, and you'd be like excited to see what those six or seven where you'd have a week to buy those, plus you'd have all the other ones, the older back catalog you could buy, and they'd usually be at a cheaper rate. Now, uh, this time around, they just had like really seven movies and one that changed on a daily basis. It, if you uh, did your math, it actually ended up to be a lot less movies than you got uh, the other way, and uh, the prices weren't the best. But uh, that being said, I do love Screen Factory, and I uh, hope to see them get back to their. Uh, to the joys of, of their really good summer for your stuff. And with Child's playing Exorcist 3 and Carrie coming out, let's look at the ones I got right now because I know those three are going to be added to the, to the collection. First up is one that I've never watched, but I saw the trailer and the trailer looked really good. Uh, one of the buying a lot of Scream Factory stuff. Uh, I found this one for like, I think it was four bucks at a uh, Walmart. And it was brand new and it was Scream Factory, so. Uh, one of these days I shall check it out. Probably when my better half is got I don't want her to miss out though. Don't want to miss out on the cheesy goodness that is the monkey's paw. One wish, a thousand regrets. Of course I know the story of the monkey's paw. Uh, I'm guessing this is probably one of their chiller uh, releases. They did a lot of movies with uh, with the chiller channel and stuff like that and some like IFC releases. Maybe this is an IFC release. Uh, it doesn't look, I don't see IFC on it. That's why we got like the release. Yeah, the other stuff. Human Centipede. It's not going in my collection. Unless it was really cheap. If I had like $10 at, like a, at a yard sale or something, maybe I'd buy the box and just put it in and never watch it. But, uh, you know, complete doesn't. Next up is the uh, French film, Dead Shadows. So, uh, I watched a trailer of this one first. I knew nothing about it. Uh, was blown away by the visuals. 
and uh, picked up during a, you can see this here, tag. There was a store that was selling out, and uh, got it for a buck. So for you, like, I'm not impressed with this Screen Factory collection. There's a lot more impressive things coming up than uh, that. I probably shouldn't have started with that, should I? But you got to build. got to get built to a momentum, get a crescendo going. Here we go. Have the howling. When I originally started buying Screen Factories, I started buying the DVDs over the Blu-rays. Uh, why did I do that madness? Because their artwork is really, really good. And when I saw this, uh, I wanted the biggest piece of art I could possibly get. And this was like the pre-poster days where I wasn't ordering any Screen Factories from their site because they're kind of expensive. Uh, I was actually going to Morocco to uh, with my uh, better half and my, my kids. They were young much younger and uh we were going there for like doing a commitment ceremony have a holiday and uh it was the day of it and the howling came out <clears throat> and i was like going all over looking for the howling so i could have it in my collection so that when i came back i could watch the howling right away uh obviously my priorities are totally on straight since this was the day we're going to morocco but i did manage to find it and uh this was actually the only copy i could find in town at the time I wanted this one a lot, really bad, actually. One, I love the movie The Howling, uh, but two, for another reason. There is a featurette on here. Uh, God, let's, where's that at again? Uh, not the one, like, there's got the MGM featurette on here, like the original one, but it's like a featurette where they talk to the producer of The Howling. And in that, he gets to talk about every one of The Howling films, all the sequels, but he produced all of them, including the kind of quality type Howling Re Reborn or Rebirth, whatever. I got it here somewhere. I don't remember what it's called. Reborn, I think. Uh, it's a really fascinating uh, featurette, and I was really glad to get it. Just for, I've watched it several times. And again, the artwork is fantastic. Here's, the, of course, the original art on the inside. A lot of these here have like different artwork on it. I don't know if these here are like Monkey's Paw or anything like that. Dead Shadows, does it? Does Dead Shadows have a different artwork? Yes, we have this artwork. And this stunningly different artwork. Something, I guess. Monkey's paw. Nah, she's got like a dude inside. Next up in the ones I bought. This one I actually bought at Walmart. Uh, there, yeah, there's a time you could get like a lot of screen factories at Walmart. You can still get some. Like, I mean, like other really cheap ones. Uh, the ones that uh, don't, uh, you know, kind of like the IFC stuff, the chiller TV stuff. Those usually show up at Walmart because they're really cheap and uh, they're DVD uh, in a lot of cases. They'll have like some Blu-rays in there. DVDs tend tends to sell a lot at Walmart, even more so than Blu-ray, uh, still to this day. DVD tends to be the higher grossing seller there, for, from what I can see. It is Toad Poopers The Fun House. As you know, I have the uh, Arrow Blu-ray of this. Uh, there's a couple different features on here. Uh, the Arrow one is overall a better release of uh, Fun House, but it's cool to have both of them. They got like the two different artworks. And I'm, go I'm not going to lie, this is probably, this may be my least favorite artwork for any of the uh, Screen Factory releases. It just, uh, and the guy that did it, Nathan Thomas Milner, is a very good artist. Uh, but not this, not on this one. It just, uh, it, it seemed lazier than uh, his stuff. And uh, he's a guy whose artwork I actually really admire. It was just a mess there. A miss there. The only thing I can think is the kind of maybe the distorted sequences is maybe meant to be like a funhouse mirror. Uh, still, it doesn't totally work for me, but I can get it if uh, that's the case. Except it's a Wes Craven film, one that not a lot of people talk about, and it's a personal favorite of mine. And that movie is Deadly Blessing. I really love this movie. Uh, it's got like a, got kind of a mystery to it. Uh, there's kind of a Maybe there's a supernatural aspect. You don't really know to the end of it if there is. Uh, it's got some fantastic actors here, so I'll just look. So that's Sharon Stone, right? Of course, in the background right there. We also got uh, Susan Buckner, right? And uh, God, the girl from... Uh, and Martha Je Marion Jensen, right? Marion Jensen, yeah. We also have Ernest Borgnine in this movie as well. We have uh, uh, Michael Berryman. It's an incredibly cool film. Now, did you watch this one with me? You did, right? It's like set in kind of like this, uh, there's this religious area, it's not, not an Amish, but kind of like an Amish area. Uh, and her husband dies at the beginning of the film. And then it's kind of like, who killed her husband? And 
there's a lot there's a lot to it. There's, there's actually another actress in this one as well, coming kind of early. Kind of she's a lot of TV and stuff. Lisa Hartman. Yeah. And she did a lot of like shows and soap operas and stuff like that back in the day. Very beautiful woman. Next couple are uh, ones I really enjoyed. They didn't have a lot of features on them, but what they did have was were really interesting. And that is Psycho 2, which I did see in theater. And uh, I remember they had like, you could see the boom mic in like a couple sequences in this movie in the theater. And I can't remember if I sat in here or not. Uh, when I did watch this, I've seen this one so many times that I automatically put the commentary on for uh, Psycho 2. And I really did like it. I really enjoyed the commentary. Tom Holland did a great job in the commentary for this film here. Uh, but it's definitely one I recommend. Next up is Anthony Perkins directed Psycho 3. So yeah, he did the uh, Psycho 3 as well. And again, we got a commentary with the uh, screenwriter on this one as well, Charles Edward Pogue. And again, it's another fantastic commentary. So these here are like com the commentaries. We got actor actors interviews here as well with uh, Kate Shea and uh, Brink Stevens and a special effect makeup artist. Who did Brink Stevens play in Psycho 3? I think she was like a, a body double or something. It's been a while since I've seen that movie. And the last time I watched it, I did watch it with commentary and just kind of listened to it. Next up is uh, Rest in Peace, The Tall Man. It is Phantasm 2. I I love the Phantasm series. If you've been watching my channel since like the beginning, then you're going to know that I'm this huge Phantasm fan. I'm actually looking forward to the new one. I'm a little worried it wasn't, wasn't directed by the original director, but uh, he says it's good, so I'm going to kind of trust him on that. And uh, But this one here is really, really good. There's a lot of features on this one. Uh, this is the uh, the last of my Scream Factory DVDs. The rest are going to be on Blu-ray, guys. And uh, I really like this film. I should, you know, I should, even though there's not no difference in features, if I ever find it for like a decent price, I'll probably upgrade this one to Blu-ray because I really am a fan of Phantasm 2, Though there really doesn't make sense to upgrade to the Blu-ray when it's the same transfer and all. You know, when there's so many others I don't have. Madness. I'm talking madness. So next up is the set of our Blu-rays. So getting to the really cool stuff here, guys. Uh, yeah, we'll start with this one. Uh, Eva Destruction, Gregory Hines. It's a cheesy sci-fi kind of flick. Do I love it? No. Uh, it was a decent film. What uh, you know, it's an actioner. It's so 90 minutes. Kind of, it's, it's a cool time waster. But I bought it because I didn't own it, and I needed to make up enough money at the sale to get free shipping. Life choices, we all make them, uh, but <laughs> it's not—it's not a bad movie. Uh, Eve of Destruction is a pretty cool film. I don't think you've seen this one yet. I don't know if you've seen it before or not, but uh, yeah, actually, it's, it's a fairly fun film. I, I enjoy it for what the uh, for what they did with them. They can't, I gotta give them credit. I give them props for what they did because, like, no one else is gonna say, "Hey, let's put Eve of Destruction on Blu-ray." Um, totally different though is Dark Angel, which I saw as I Come in Peace. I've never, until Screen Factory put this out as Dark Angel, I had no idea that Dark Angel was the name of it somewhere. It was always I Come in Peace. I, even though the trailers I saw were, had the uh, guy, you know, like, I come in peace, you leave in pieces uh, type of thing. And it was really cool. I remember I loved this movie. I had a lot of great action sequences. This is one of the, the you know, the final hurrahs for action movies that before the whole CG, I think, came out and, like, honestly ruined a lot of the action stuff. So... When you're watching this movie, if you got this one, and you're seeing the explosions and all this stuff going around, yeah, that shit's really happening. These guys are taking their lives in their hands to make these. That's one of the things that made these early action films, the 80s stuff, so badass that these people really were, you know, and their stunt men as well, as well, were risking like life and limb to uh, put off some pretty cool and very cheesy stuff. But it's a Dolph Lundgren film, a really good one. Uh, Brian, what's that? Brian Benman's in this, right? Yeah, Brian Benman, who of course would come to fame with the uh, TV series that HBO did called Dream On. A lot of nudity in that show, but a really cool show. Really funny, actually. Really, check it out. If you haven't seen this one, it's it's uh, one of the more, uh, like, kind of the least expensive ones. Uh, and uh, it's a great one. Unfortunately, there was another one called uh, Jericho Mile or something like that. And I wanted it so bad. Uh, there's a couple reasons I wanted that movie. And it came here to uh, to St. John's once. And I've never seen it show up since. 
uh, not once. I mean, I, I usually buy, I don't go online with a lot of Screen Factory stuff unless it's the sale. And I've never seen it show up in sale either. But it never, sh it showed up once here. And at the time, I was getting like some br some uh, birthday presents or that for my dad. And I got my dad that one because I figured he'd, he'd enjoy it. I'm like, okay, I'll pick it up next time. It's never shown back up. Uh, damn it. I want that movie. Uh, I'll find it. <clears throat> next up is a well, surprising choice for uh, Screen Factory, to be totally honest with you. And that is uh, Supernova with uh, James Spader and Angela Bassett. Again, not one of my favorites. I got it in the last Screen Factory sale. Uh, when there was, uh, was on a was on at a really decent price. Glad to have it. Uh, do I think it should have been a Screen Factory movie? Probably not. Probably could have been a Shout Factory release. Uh, I know there's you know there's a horror aspect to it, so maybe uh, if we really stretch it, uh, we can say this is a Screen Factory release. But uh, next up was one that I did enjoy uh, quite a bit more, and that is Leviathan. I really do kind of like these underwater movies, these monster movies and stuff, and uh, this was actually pretty cool. We got a great cast here as well. Peter Weller, Amanda Page, Richard Crenna, Daniel Stern, Ernie Hudson. Uh, that is an amazing cast. There's, you know, there's so many people worked on this. I had the uh, screenwriter from, like, uh, what's it? what did he screenwrite? Blade Runner, right? Yeah, the guy that wrote Blade Runner worked on this. And it's a beautiful visual film. I uh, really like Leviathan. I was glad to see it released. Again, I thought it could have been a Shout Factory release. It didn't have to be a Screen Factory, but okay, no. That's all right, but uh, I went about it anyway. Hector Elizondo is in that one, isn't Did I mention his name? This one is in that movie. Yeah, yes. I knew it was in the film. Next up is a Wes Craven film that's not horror, and that is The Swamp Thing. Uh, of course, this is based more on the earlier Swamp Thing, uh, kind of like the uh, the Bernie Wrights and Swamp Thing, as opposed to like the Alan Moore stuff that will come in later on. The, or adult swamp thing but again it's really cool stuff i uh, i do enjoy this uh, you know they do actually talk with len Wynn, of course the creator of swamp thing him when i say swamp thing i always think of Wrightson, but len Wynn's the actual creator of it but Wrightson's like the visual aspect what when you think the actual uh, visuals of it i do like this film uh, some people like didn't like it and didn't like the sequel i like to see the sequel return of swamp thing it's a very cheesy film but uh, i kind of want to see it show up uh i would love to have that one right next to this one on blu-ray Combo pack. Now the thing is that there was an unrated international edition that uh, showed a couple more sequences <clears throat> and Miss Adrian Barbeau's beauty, her uh, natural beauty, off in a <clears throat> her assets were showed off much much better. Apparently my Samsung Health just messaged me. Uh, but it's a fun film. It's the uh, costume in it is actually really good for uh, for back in the day. It would be so well that they would like kind of just update it a little bit and use it for the Swamp Thing TV series, which I own part of, but I don't own all of it yet. Uh, Arcane, of course, is played by Louis Jordan, a fantastic actor and a great Dracula. So watch for for his Dracula film. It's actually pretty damn good. It's on PBS. But uh, oh, it's such a crushing age. Remember, both. John Carpenter, you were a lucky, lucky man. It may have been the only reason I watched Mod. I don't even remember if it was funny. It may have been. I don't know. Agent Barbeau was in it. And uh, for that reason, I've seen Mod. If you ask me anything about Mod right now, I know there's an older dude in it. And the girl that would go on to be in Golden Girls. And the greatness that is Adrian Barbeau. <clears throat> I still think she looks beautiful. Even Carnival, I thought she, looked, she was stunning in that as well. Great actress. Uh, next up is one that's uh, kind of a lesser known one, but I, I always recommend it to people. It's a thriller. It's uh, not a stri straight out -and horror film, but it's uh, it's a very cool film. It's, uh, it's fairly well paced and uh, has Peter Billingsley from A Christmas Story in it. Uh, Steve McCaddy's in it as well. It's a great cast, actually. Paul Amat. Uh, and it's uh, Death Valley, not even The Scream Escapes. I, won't, I don't want to go too much into this one here. It is one that I do like and I did find fun. I think it's good to go in blind. I don't want to uh, like under or over hype it. I just want to say it's a good film. It's definitely worth giving a watch to. And uh, let me, if you've seen it, let me know what you think. Next up is Witchboard. I love this movie because I love Tanik Tane. And, uh, well, 
the guy from Days or Lives is in this, Steve Nichols, the guy that played Steve Johnson, Patch, on uh, Days or Lives, and uh, you know the guy that with the eye patch that was with Kayla, and then he had surgery, and got his eye fixed, and fought a evil racist Southern priest guy, and lost his eye again. And I watched a lot of days when I was young. Um, but Witch Boy is a really cool film. There's a lot of features on this. But I haven't talked too much about the features on here. But uh, Scream Factory does on their collector's editions. They really do some great features. Uh, this is definitely uh, one of the ones that I think has some fantastic features on here. There's some great commentaries on here as well. Uh, some great interviews with uh, with the director, Kevin Tenney. I really do like Kevin Tenney. He, uh, he did some really cool stuff that I'm... Uh, that I have in my collection and some cool stuff that I'm going to get. Oh, next up is one where I think my better half actually liked this one better than the original. We watched both of them. And, uh, did you? She thought this one was kind of fun. A lot of people, my, you know, one of my friends is a huge fan of the original film and he refuses to acknowledge that this film even exists. Uh, whenever we talk about it, he's like, that. what do you mean? There's no, there's no part two. But yes, there is. And it's fun. It's a fun film. And it is pumpkined to blood wings. A lot of stunt casting in this film. Uh, Amy Dolan's, of course. We got Andrew Robinson in this one. Steve Canelli, um, Karen Kay, Linnea Quigley, Roger Clinton, like Bill Clinton's brother. Soleil Moon Fry, beautiful as always. Now with the Punky Brewster. Uh, Hill Harper would go on to be big for CSI New York. Which, thanks to a good friend of mine named Jason, I now have all the seasons. <clears throat> so. But pumpkin to blood, two blood wings. Thoughts? Um, it didn't take itself seriously. It made it the cheesy movie, monster movie that it should be. She talked really light, low there, so in case you didn't hear, she said that the film didn't take itself too seriously. It was the cheesy monster movie that she, that it should be, that she wanted it to be. Next up is the sequel to a classic film. That's Candyman Farewell to the Flesh. Uh, I did enjoy this film. It's kind of fun with Kelly Rollins. It's Kelly Rollins. I'm pretty sure. It's, 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 you know, ever since I got the names wrong the other day, was, who's in this one? Yeah, Kelly Rollins. Uh, is in, I always got to second guess myself because I made some couple boo boos. It's been a long week. <laughs> but Candyman Farewell to the Flesh, I, I did like this one. It's um, It's got a couple of cool interviews on here with like Tony Todd and Veronica Cartwright. There's an commentary, which I haven't listened to yet. i got to listen to some commentary some of these. And, uh, like a, I guess it's an okay. No, it's not a very good different art. But, uh, I'm a little film. If you haven't realized this yet, the collector's editions, you know, the, the other stuff, the stuff you're kind of wondering about if I got, they're coming up. We work our way to those. Next up is a really fun film that, as fun as a, as much fun as I have with the movie, I actually enjoyed the documentary on it even more. So, it's called From a Whisper to a Scream, otherwise known, when I saw it on VHS as Offspring. I was got uh, Vincent Price is in this. This is directed by Jeff Burr. Jeff Burr is also uh, known for directing uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 Leatherface, which is a favorite of mine. And uh, I think me and my, uh, my better half, we were hanging out one night and I just and I got up work and I said okay let's put on Leatherface I want to watch Leatherface I haven't seen this in a long time and I was exhausted so she's not a horror movie person and uh, I conked out I fell asleep and she got to watch because she never turns off a movie without like uh, watching the whole thing even if she goes uh, she's watching a movie on TV and it's a really crappy movie she'll like keep and she'll she's a nurturer she invests herself uh, so she watched Leatherface without me and when I woke up I, she was not pleased she was not pleased with me at all I, I have to say but from Whisper to a Scream the documentary of this is really good it's called Return to Oldfield uh, the, I actually did a re, no, not Return to Oldfield that's the uh, feature I don't know where is it? no no I guess Return to Oldfield because I actually did a uh, and I really appreciate this actually I did a a review of the documentary uh, as opposed to just the film itself. I did I reviewed the documentary and when I did I actually received a response on my video from the guys that made the documentary 
And uh, that's really like highly appreciated. I, I was blown away by that. One, that they'd actually seen it. And two, that they took the time to respond to the fact that I, uh, that I did a review of the documentary. And it was fantastic. This is a fantastic film. Check it out. But, you know, don't just watch the film. This is one of the times when the documentary really, really needs to be watched. Next up is a uh, classic film. And that is Howling 2. This is a movie that I watched. Okay, let's let's be honest here. This is a movie any boy from the 80s watched over and over again. Well, let's be honest. We watched the ending sequence of it over and over again. Because Sybil Danning is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful woman. Uh, and this is her on the back. So there is a sequence in the film where... And, you know, it is actual part of the film. She has to rip open her shirt and shows off the Sybil Danning breasts, which are actually uh, very famous because she is very uh, godly gifted, naturally. Anyway, that was just a, like a split-second sequence in the film. This is a very cheesy film. Bad acting, pretty much all around. Christopher Lee was uh, pretty much on set, like, saying, oh my God, what have I done, <laughs> type of thing. Uh, remember Brown, the guy that played, like, Captain America in those TV mo two TV movies. He's in this. He's a starring in this. Uh, but Sybil Danning, she does a great job, actually. I, th I thought she was one of the best parts of the film. And, uh, anyways, there's a scene where she, like, rips open her, sh her shirt and shows off nature's gift to Sybil Danning. The director of the film, Philip Mora, took that sequence at the end of the film and must have showed it around what seemed to be about 10 or 15 times or more with kind of a music video. So basically you'd see this kind of like really cheesy music video uh, type of thing with sequences from the film and it would keep going back and showing her her breasts over and over again. Uh, Zippo Danning, who has, who's not shy about like a uh, new deer or anything like that in films, she thinks, you know, that's... and that's one of the things I really respect is that uh, she's, she's cool with that. Uh, but she was not cool with the fact that he just kept showing it over and over again to pad out his film, which is what he did. It's like, look, this is probably one of the best parts of the film. That and, uh, yeah, there's a scene of Christopher Lee where it's like a kind of mod type of glasses. It's hilarious. You got to check it out. Actually, uh, when I was waiting before this one came out, uh, a good friend of mine actually sent me the DVD of this edition of this one that he found in the store. And I was uh, so super stoked because I'm such a fan of that film. Uh, I'm a fan of Silver Danning. <sighs> I gotta get my plan with fire. Crawl Space. Uh, Klaus Kinski. This is a really good film. Uh, I'd actually like to watch this one again. You, have you, you haven't seen this one yet, have you? It's actually a really good film. Basically, uh, Kinski here plays... God, Car I think it's... What's his name again? Gunther? Carl Gunther, I think. What's that? Landlord? Carl. Okay, perfect. Right there. Okay. Carl Gunther on this. And uh, he's this. He's a landlord. And he's got like this crawl space where he uh, goes and he spies on uh, on women in his building. He, he, you know, he kind of takes them and there's tortures, there's killing. Uh, this deals with like kind of Nazism and, you know, abuse. And, like, It's a really good film. Uh... It's got a great score by Pino Donaggio. Uh, it's directed by David uh, Schulmer. I hope I got the name right there. Who uh, did like Puppet Master movies and stuff like that. But uh, this is a fantastic film. And if that wasn't enough, I always got to mention this every time I pick this up. There's a short film on here called Please Kill Mr. Kinski. Where uh, they talk about the fact that he was so hard to work with. And so unliked that the crew was constantly asking the director if there was any way if they could do it <laughs> to kill uh, Klaus Kinski. Uh, luckily, they didn't do that. Uh, rest in peace now, Klaus Kinski has passed on since then. Um, and I'm sure some of the people that worked with him are not overly saddened by that. But uh, Kinski was a genius. He really was. He's a, he's a fantastic actor. And for in many ways, he was very underrated. Not in his own mind. He was very rated well in his own mind. But uh, in reality, he was a very... Like, he did not get all the props that he could have gotten, and a lot of it was because of the attitude that he had when he was, uh, when he was doing stuff. So, uh, that's
That's what you gotta watch for. <laughs> Next up is the Toe Pooper Classic, the really fun, kind of cheesy Invaders from Mars. It doesn't take itself too seriously. I like that. Some people think that the tonalness of it is kind of a little bit off, and that it so sometimes takes stuff a bit seriously. Sometimes it seems humorous, and they're not quite sure which way it shifts. I thought uh, it worked for me. The tone worked for me, and I didn't find uh, I didn't find that. I didn't find that kind of like uh, kind of polarizing duality in, in the film. I actually really enjoyed it. I'm trying to like get comfortable here because my feet are falling asleep and I'm trying not to sit on them but it's so comfortable when I do it until I try to stand up and I've got wobbly legs but uh Rich Mars got some great features on here as well by the way uh, we got a retrospective on here an auto commentary with the director there's some incredible stuff so and I think yeah as always there's some cool this one's actually very cool I like the uh, cover up front there I'm surprised I haven't changed it over I might actually do that Next up is a uh, kind of a classic haunted house one with uh, one of my favorite actors, and that is, of course, Roddy McDowell in The Legend of Hell House. I actually have the uh, recently got the DVD of this one as well, which is really cool. I might make like a DVD combo pack out of it. Uh, I did really enjoy this film. There's just something, and I love this kit. Isn't this cover it's awesome? Like the other cover is really good too. It's almost uh, identical, except for like. Uh, some more posterized. For the sake of your sanity, pray it isn't true. The Legend of Hell House. Again, I really enjoyed this movie. And I don't think that's another one I don't think you've seen. It's a ghost story. You like ghost stories. <laughs> She's like, no, no, leave me out of it. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, next up is, uh, is Without Warning which I, uh, I've been waiting to see for a long time. It was one of those that uh, people wanted to see, but hadn't seen, and they kind of, they kind of heard about. They knew there was a lot of big actors in it. It was kind of like a, a different, unique, kind of cheesy alien. Kind of reminds me of one of the Star Trek aliens, actually. See what I mean? So they put it out. Uh, it was like a really big deal when they did. Some people got it, and they got there, and like, oh... What's the big deal about? Well, uh, the big deal is that it's, it was it took a long time to actually find this one. Uh, and, and they did. I mean, it's got some great cast. Like, you got Jack Palance, Martin Landau's in this, Cameron Mitchell, Neville Brand, uh, Ralph Meeker. And, you know, Ralph Meeker is one of my favorite it's from back in the uh, Kiss Me Deadly days. But uh, definitely, it's fun to check out. Not for everybody. Some people were kind of like, uh, didn't, you know, didn't enjoy it as much, but I did. I thought it was fun. Next up is the, when you think of like picked on like kids that get revenge, you usually think of Carrie, but there's one kid that was more hated and picked on than any other kid in the history of cinema. Uh, yes, and that would be Stanley Coopersmith. And who is Stanley Coopersmith? He is the star of Evil Speak, you know, of course, well, it's, uh, you know, it's Mr. Clint Howard himself, but uh, everybody hates this kid in this film. They, there's no, there's no like liking of Stanley Cooper Smith at all within this uh, film's. It's a messed up film. I love it. Richard Mall's in this one here. Uh, it's got a great cast. Uh, Don Starks here from, of course, from that '70s show. He's very young in this. He looks very different. Uh, did anybody get picked on more than poor Cooper Smith in this film? <laughs> what a hated kid. I mean, he wasn't even doing anything. It wasn't like a mean kid or anything like that. Sure, he wasn't the best looking guy in the school, but you don't, you know, that's that's a lot of hate. That's, that's serious stuff out there. I like that. I love that movie. Uh, next up is a really fun one, and that is a slasher film. I love slasher movies. You guys know that. You know, slashers like, are very near and dear to my heart. And that is Final Exam. I love the way this one was done. It's kind of different. You were kind of like not really guessing the killer type of thing. This one was, you know, was a man, just a maniac. Uh, I like the opening of it, uh, which is kind of awkward for some people now because it's like a pretend. Uh, I see you're sleeping with you. The cat is like resting in my uh, in his arms there. Lucky cat. Uh, so there's kind of like they do like a fake it, almost like a terrorist attack at the college so that he can get out of like 
do a test. Uh, yeah, I don't think that plays as well today in today's society, but uh, hilarious back then. Where's the eighties? We everything was hilarious in the eighties. We did a movie about a guy that went in blackface to go to law school, and it became a big hit. Uh, so uh, politically correct, we weren't. But uh, all those movies are classic fun films. <laughs> New Year's Evil. I actually watched this one with my son, Matthew. And we uh, didn't go in with like overtly high expectations. We knew that the uh, girl that played uh, Pinky Tuscadero was one of the stars with Ross Kelly. Uh, but uh, it was a really good film. The fact was a killer, you know, you got this killer that's like, has this plan. And it's kind of an inane plan when you think, but it's just killing people on every time zone for like the New Year's. But uh, here's the thing: uh, it doesn't work out for him. Like when we can, we see this. Uh, so we get to actually follow the killer a bit more. We don't spend as much time with the final girl. Or we don't. We don't spend a lot of time there. We spend more time with the killer. And it's not like a killer point of view type of thing. We're just seeing that we actually see like the, as the killer goes through with, through his plan. Uh, we see as things go wrong. And that's actually a pretty, pretty cool aspect of it. So, uh, New Year's Evil. Another fun one is a uh, great cast. Adrian Zemed's in this one. Joe Panleone is in this one as well, right? Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, Daryl Hannah, Rachel Ward. Uh, the final character. Again, another one's in the woods. I like these movies. I... A big fan. The next one is one that I reviewed on here. To, she's pointing at the microwave. I think she's going to tell me that she's about to microwave some food. Uh, she's doing it in pantomime, so I'm not quite sure. But either she's going to microwave some food, or uh, she's telling me that she just got me a microwave masker from Arrow Video. So I don't have microwave masker, so I guess food is the uh, food's the answer there. Uh, next up is Robert England's Phantom of the Opera. There were supposed to be two of these. It was supposed to be followed up by uh, Phantom of New York. Uh, they never did do the sequel film. I, I really did dig this one. Um, I'm a big fan. A good friend of mine, she's moved away now, uh, named Kelly. Uh, you've seen her in a couple of my videos, actually. Two or three of them, she actually reviewed this movie with me. Uh, you can go back and check that out if you want to. We had a lot of fun doing this one. Uh, Dwight H. Little directed it, and, you know, the director of... Halloween 4, uh, among many other films, but uh, Halloween 4 is the big one. But here we go, Phantom of the Opera. <sighs> Some people thought it did too much in the slasher aspect of it, but I thought for the time period that this was in, it was actually perfect. But here's the thing, that at the time, Phantom of the Opera, the, you know, the stage play was really, really popular, so some people going in to see this probably weren't expecting the level of like gore and stuff that was in the film. But uh, that's okay. Next up is Ninja 3, The Domination. And if you watch any of my other videos where I show off this video, you know what's coming next. Only Ninja can kill a ninja. Yes, I love that one. Uh, I always have to say it. Uh, it is about an aerobics instructor that is possessed by the spirit of a ninja. No, that's really what it's about. It's in the Dickey, you know, it's in the breaking movies and stuff like that. She plays an aerobics instructor that is possessed by the spirit of a ninja. Uh, fun little film. Sho Kazuji is in this one, of course. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Makes me want to have the break and double pack. Uh, I'll get that done wrong. Uh, the Horror Show. Really good film. The, uh, the actors in this are actually pretty damn good. Lance Henriksen, of course, always good. Brian James truly commits to the uh, role uh, that he plays there, and that's, uh, that's Max Max Jenky, right? Uh, <clears throat> the thing is how the movie t plays off as kind of like a number Elm Street type of thing. It even goes as far as given... I don't want to give away, but let's just say the ending is... It's very Hollywood. Uh, if there's ever was a Hollywood-style ending, that's, uh, that's definitely it. But uh, I thought he did a great job in the film. Incredible film. Next up is a Hammer film, and uh, when I did my Hammer collection video a while back, 
Uh, people asked me if I had this one because I forgot to show it in the collection video at the time. And uh, you've got your food? You know, I'm seeing a lack of microwave massacre, like being brought to the table. So I'll assume that food is the only thing. Uh, well, there will be a microwave massacre <laughs> in five minutes when I'm done with this. <laughs> the Vampire Lovers, a great movie with Ingrid Pitt and uh, Peter Cushing. And uh, Ingrid Pitt is so, such a wonderfully beautiful woman. Uh, she did some amazing stuff. Uh, she, had, she had a daughter that acted as well. Pretty sure I got like a TV series. But I think she acted with her daughter. I gotta check that out. Uh, of course, based on Carmilla, there's some like cool features in here as well, and all those features from the MGM one as well were ported over. This that was probably one of the cheapest uh, screen factories, like the Blu-rays I got. Uh, that was always one of that was always on the cheaper list when we went to check it out. Next up is part of my uh, well, what would you call this one? Hmm. Can exploitation, I guess. Of my can exploitation horror. I am Canadian. I'm probably Canadian, actually. And uh, we had a lot of really cool horror films that are in the A's. We, my government, spent a lot of my hard earned tax dollars <laughs> making some pretty cheesy ass films. And I'm proud of that. Yes, yes, I am. Uh, Deadly Eyes. It's a killer rat movie. It's a really good one. Sarah Botsworth is in this one, and she uh, she's famous. She's a famous Canadian actress. She does like a lot of stuff. Do do do, and uh, there's a scene at the beginning of this movie. I'll give this away uh, because it's just at the beginning, where uh, this you know these teens or college students are like at a, kind of having a party at this girl's place. She's got a little kid, and. Uh, so the, they go, they go, and uh, she leaves the kitchen to say bye to them. When she goes back, her kid has gone out of his chair, and there's like a trail of blood. Uh, you know, right away, right, you know, they're, the movie means business. It's taking it seriously. We, we can eat kids. <laughs> Rats can eat kids in this movie. Uh, actually, I think they were like, what did we say? They were like some type of dog, actually, with a rat suit. <laughs> it's a very fun film. Yeah, Winter Dogs. Winter Dogs? Yeah. Did you watch that with me or did you just watch Feature Up? Did you just watch Feature Up? Here's one that I haven't had the nerve to watch yet. I got this one because I really like the actress that's in it. Uh, and it is one of those kind of cheesy, like, nature run amok films. Like, uh, Lisa Lingalis is in this. Lisa Lingalis, I'm pretty sure. Was she in this one too? She's in like two or three of the ones that I got. Uh, but it's called The Nest. And it's about cockroaches. And I have a fear of insects. This was only $5. <laughs> uh, or I would not have had this. I, I know, I eventually would have had this because I wanted to have it in my collection. And I was going to watch this with my son. We're going to do, do the whole thing together. He doesn't like insects really either. We're kind of like bravely do it together. So maybe maybe me and him will. That's it. And she said no. <laughs> so the hunt to find somebody to watch the nest with will continue. Next up is a classic film uh, by Werner Herzog. Herzog. That is Nasratu the Vampire. Uh, again, another Kinski film, and definitely a role that he was meant to play. He really embodies this character. It's a fantastic film. It's extremely beautiful. If you've not seen this film, I do recommend it. It has the, uh, the German German language version, and you do keep doing that. <laughs> the English version as well. She's trying to destroy my Blu-rays, I tell you. How dare you sit down on the couch that you're sitting down on? Seriously? <laughs> uh, it's, but Nash Fry 2 is a fantastic, beautiful film. You've seen this one, I'm assuming, right? It is gorgeous. Next up is Prison. Uh, I have this cover on it because the cover that Prison came with is pretty much known for being one of the worst covers that Screen Factory ever put out. I didn't find it that bad. It wasn't as bad as Funhouse for me, but uh, Viggo Mortensen did not look too much like Viggo Mortensen in the drawing. Uh, and yeah, it is Viggo Mortensen in the film, by the way. Uh, this one's done by uh, by Rennie Harlan, who had directed a lot of action films, of course. And of course, well, Never Knows for Part 4. He did The Dream Master. Uh, but you know, a lot of action people know him for movies like Cliffhanger and stuff like that. What do you think of when you think of Rennie Harlan? 
I think of the fact that he was married to uh, a girl, right? Uh, was he married to her? I'm not going to say because I, I told him to be wrong. Today I'll totally be wrong again. I'll be like, oh, I botched that one. Because <sighs> I was totally in love with her. I was actually on a date in uh, college. And uh, this girl that I went with. And yeah, we were watching a movie. I gotta make sure that it's a uh, right girl before you can go any farther with this one here. I know what you're thinking. Nothing as exciting as watching me look at my phone to see if I'm right and not gonna make an ass of myself. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> no, Randy Harlan was, he was, he was married to her. I know he was. This is killing me, him. This is killing my. Uh, it's tearing you apart. It's tearing me apart, Lisa. Wow, that's almost as bad as him. I was right. Yes, I should have totally went with that. Uh, he was married to Gina Davis. They did Cutthroat Island together too. Uh, but yeah, I was watching the Accidental Tourist. Uh, not my favorite film, decent film for what it is. Uh, anyway, with a, uh, a date, and it was like our first or second date. So, first time I ever watched Grease 2, which was like a, a thing. It was, it's an, it was an Aaron thing. It's like, everybody that I date must watch Grease 2. <laughs> and put up with me singing along to it. If they can do that, they have passed part one of the tour of the dating of the Aaron. Oh, God. It's amazing that I dated anyone after one date. <laughs> I started out for the WrestleManiac with her. This poor girl had to listen to me talk about how beautiful Gina Davis was on a date. Yeah, I wasn't exactly the suavest guy. Not going to lie there, guys. <laughs> but Randy Harlan did present anyway. It's a decent film. Next up is another Philip Moore film. And don't be scared off because you watched Halloween, Howling 2 and Howling 3, and they were really crappy films. Uh, the Beast Within, actually, it's a pretty cool film. I will warn you that uh, the movie starts a little rapey. Uh, <laughs> it does. But it's a scene that's needed for the film because it's about a guy that's growing up and he's turned into this like creature and he doesn't know why. And we know why because we saw the beginning of the film. And, well, the rapey stuff happened to his mom. so And he was a product of it. Next up is one that my... One of the ones that my cousin Raj got. I mean, I really did dig this movie, and that is Monkey Shines. Monkey Shines is a fun little film. Uh, it gets a lot of hate, and I don't really know why. I know it's George Romero like doing stuff that's not zombies, and uh, some people don't really don't like can't dig that. But I do. I do dig the the not zombies thing. Once there was a man whose prison was a chair. The man had a monkey that made they made the strangest pair. The monkey ruled the man that climbed inside his head. And and now as fate would have it, one of them is dead. I shan't tell you which one it is. But uh, I will tell you one thing. I did like this movie. Also, my cousin also got me a room for my birthday at the time, was The Dark Half. I really, really like this as well. George Romero, I thought it was really good. Good, I think Timothy Hutton really made it for me. He just did such a good role uh, with the character. This has a really good, by the way, Monkey Shines and uh, The Dark Half both have really good documentaries on them. We watched both of them. Uh, now, Michael Rooker, uh, which many of you guys know from like stuff like either from Henry Portra's Circa or Walking Dead, of course, uh, plays a uh, plays the sheriff in this. Plays a good guy, and uh, they really. He, they really had to fight hard to actually have him do that role because uh, they didn't want him. Uh, the producers didn't want him to do it. But he uh, he showed them. He showed them all. Next up is we're getting into my double features. And first off, we've got Bad Dreams and Visiting Hour. A fantastic double feature. One that I really, really do enjoy. Uh, Bad Dreams is a great film. Uh, visiting Hours. That's Michael freaking Ironside. And Michael Ironside is just one of those guys. I had this one on DVD. When this came out on DVD from uh, Ship Factory, I bought it. 
as soon as I found out that this was coming out on Blu-ray, I had to grab the Blu-ray as well. There's like, I think there was an interview or something that wasn't on the, uh, wasn't on the DVD, but I just wanted to have this one. I really love this movie. Next up is Blackula and Scream. Blackula Scream. Great double feature. We did love these. Uh, it's really kind of cheesy. We love black exploitation films. It's a big like genre in our house. Uh, but he's like, and nobody can figure out he's a vampire. The dude's walking around with a cape and like clothes that came out of like the 18th century, and like and and acting very aristocratic. Nobody like blinks most. Of There's one guy, one guy that kind of knows. But uh, that, oh, you know. it is a black exploitation movie. But they dressed pretty funky. <laughs> yes, but not this funky. <laughs> And this is, no, it's, uh, I love this. Uh, Pam Greer is in the sequel, actually. Next up is a classic cheese of Ghoulies and Ghoulies 2. Uh, some very fun stuff. They'll get you in the end. I can't help it. You're totally trying to just drum it. No, I, have not. I can see it. You've got that evil gleam in your eye. Uh, but uh, I do. I had fun with these movies. Uh, we watched, I think we all watched Ghoulies here. Uh, I know me and Matthew and Cass did. Were you here for that one? Not pull the whole thing out of Well, obviously, she's saying she wants to rewatch Ghoulies at no. some point in the near future because it was such a classic film. It's a fun film for what it is. Um, Mirska Hargitay is in it, and I'm in love with her. Uh, totally not in that way. Don't worry. But you know, she's the Law and Order girl, SVU. She is no. Ever since I was a kid, actually. Uh, well, not a kid, but like kind of younger. She acted in like uh, stuff like uh, what was it? Besides Law and Order, she had like a bunch of shows. Shows. That's how, like, she did, like, parts in, like, movies and TV shows. She was in, like, a uh, Freddy's Nightmare episode. And uh, she was very 80s. She had the 80s hair. We're, we're checking out. Uh, probably one of the most quality adult features that they put out was this one here. TerraVision and the Video Dead. The Video Dead's actually a lot, a lot better than I thought and remembered it being. TerraVision, of course, a classic. Really fun film. Great soundtrack. Uh, an amazing cast on this one here. Amir um, Warnoff is in this one. We got Diane Franklin in this movie here. Jared Graham is in it. Uh, it's just a fantastic film. A lot of fun. Really funny. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> it plays... I've never played itself seriously. Terror Vision is kind of really... Nobody's going to get out in Terror Vision. And that's that. Spoiler alert. Yeah, everybody's dying. It's a monster movie. But it's, it's a fun one. Uh, next up is The Town That Dreaded Sundown. The original one. And this is a double feature as well. Because this has a really classic film. Do, 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 do. The Evictors. Which I should probably watch with my... Cousin Roger, uh, when we were kids, we watched The Evictors, and watching it like uh, after we don't, I didn't find like it wasn't scary, but when I was a kid, it totally terrified me. And I'm not sure why. Jessica Harper, the other like movie love of my life when I was a kid, oh, there was like Jessica Harper, Miss Carrie, Sybil Danning. I had a list of ones that I liked there. And uh, so yeah. I totally lost my train of thought. This would have been ding, ding, ding in there. But, uh... What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Town Dread Sundown. Victors. Good double feature. One of the later double features I got was Ghost House and Witchery. The La Casa films. You know, some of the La Casa films. Uh, I really did kind of like... Finds really cool. I actually got him to watch Witchery with me, and she was like, "This is a fantastic film." Last night she was saying she didn't trust my taste on movies, but after watching Witchery, when, when she watched it, I'm sure she changed her mind and totally said that obviously he has a fantastic uh, taste for films. Witchery is a wonderful film. I love it. No, you, you are the most amazing person in the world, Aaron. You are a fantastic. <laughs> you are the god of films. Let's watch. Witchery again. Uh, <laughs> Linda Blair, David Hasselhoff. Uh, yeah, it's a fun film. That was fun. <laughs> Don't look at that. Don't show me that pain look in your eyes. It was a good film. <laughs> Speaking of good films, uh, Pierre David uh, produced the, the sequels to The Scanners. Scanners 2, The New Order, and Scanners 3, The Takeover. I thought these were really fun. They're like kind of Canadian sci-fi type films. Uh, they're like not the quality of like scanners. Obviously, these these are not by Cronenberg, uh, by no stretch of the imagination. But I thought they were really fun. Uh, now it's one of the less the least uh, soul 
of the screen factories from what I've heard. This is this one hasn't sold very well at all. If it had, you probably would have put out the sequels of these because there were two sequels. They have a spin-off series called Scanner's Cop and Scanner's Cop 2. But uh, I did like these. Uh, I think Martin Hewitt is one of these. And uh, David Hewitt. I just can't get names today. The last couple of days has been like... There's been a glaze over my eyes I'm trying to figure this out. David Hewlett, who Hin knows from. What do you know him from Hin? She's like, from Star Stargate. Stargate SG-1. She, he was the, uh, what do you call scientist? Was he the scientist character? In Stargate. Yes, he was. The most interesting character. Yes, he was. The interesting character in Stargate SG-1. Yeah. Not the quality of, like, Stargate no, universe. SG-1. Yes, SG-1. Atlantis. Was he Atlantis? Oh, yeah. That's why I probably didn't see him as much. Because SG One's got a uh, has like a uh, the guy. kind of was in, in SG One, but it was just a setup for for Atlantis, Atlantis yeah. the, the backdoor pilot episodes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, he's more. But I was like, uh, she liked the original Stargate, and she liked Stargate Atlantis. I was not big on Stargate Atlantis that much. I liked Stargate Universe. I thought that was really well done. <laughs> she doesn't like it. See, she's along the lines of those people that. Uh, that watched uh, Star Trek Enterprise and were like, oh my god, <laughs> there's words to the music. This, how can this be Star Trek? She's like, this is not Star Stargate. Like, this should not be in a Stargate universe. It's trying too hard to be. What did you think it was trying to be? It was trying too hard to be Battlestar Galactica. It is not Battlestar it, Galactica. It was. You just. I stand by my <laughs> opinion. It, I, it was and a by great the way, film. It got canceled. <laughs> it got canceled because, you know what? Because there's a whole section on Bravo television called TV Too Good for TV. Sergey Universe will end up on that. <laughs> well, it is not on there, so uh -huh. it'll, it'll be on there with profit and all those other X-Ray and Skidside, uh, a great kind of cheesy, cool double feature. Well, there's a really good version of X-Ray with the, more features on it that's um, put out by 88 Films. I do recommend getting that. I still recommend getting this one. It's really cool. The freaky thing about this is that uh, I don't remember being able to see the killer's face so well when I originally watched Skidside, but thanks to uh, Blu-ray and being able to see things very, very well, the killer is shown very clearly at the beginning of the film, although it, it takes itself as a mystery throughout the rest of the film. But uh, X-Ray and Skidside. And the last of the uh, double features. Tales from the Crypt and The Vault of Horror. I love these two films. I am a big fan. I've got seasons one, two, and four of uh, Tales from the Crypt TV series, and i got to get the rest. But I love the Tales from the Crypt movies. I've watched these so many times. Um, both my kids love horror anthologies, and we always like watch as many as we can. This one doesn't have the slipcase. I'd have the non-slipcase. This is the first of the collector's editions, and that is The Army of Darkness. So we got like Theatrical cut, director's cut, international cut. Uh, there's a feature-length documentary on here. When this movie came out, uh, there was like a, a scene, like a split-second type of him jumping over a fence or something like that, or going up a hill. A scene that was missing off one of the cuts, apparently. Uh, so, the internet... Banded again to f fix this uh, slight, even though that scene was in another one of the cuts and had no serious bearing or changing in the movie itself. But they went out and they put out like uh, corrected editions of it, of this like little scene. This is original one I bought. Uh, did, is the correct edition in this? I don't think so. I, am I going to go out and bug Scream Factory so I can see a guy jump over a fence or jump up a hill when I can just go watch it in one of the other ones? No. It's, I actually find that kind of silly. Uh, and that's not all my Scream Factories. But that is all for part one. Tune in for part two, which is going to come as soon as we get this one done up. And uh, we're going to see my Scream Factory collector's editions with all the slips because I got a lot of slip ones there as well as some uh, really really cool box sets thanks for watching I'll be right back but uh this tea's not getting any warmer and uh 
There's not going to be a microwave masker for the tea. I'm just going to eat it. I'm just going to drink it cool as it is. For me right now, uh, I'll be back in a few minutes to, uh, to do the second part. These will be moved over so I can move over the, uh, the slipcase uh, collector's editions and the box sets. It's time for tea. Thank you for staying for the after credit sequence. There is an MGM collection that is going to be coming up. I do have a lot of MGMs, so there's going to be a, a scouring of my DVDs before I can actually do that one. But uh, it will be coming up. But up next, of course, is part two to the uh, Scream Factory uh, collection, complete collection of update. Hope you guys are enjoying these. Uh, you know, leave a comment, like, share. Subscribe if you haven't, and uh, thanks so much for watching. Yeah, really, it's time for tea. Sweet, sweet tea.